Cloud-based telephony is the big thing that's happening in general practice. This is the system that the government in particular feels is going to really help with that 8 a.m. rush and help with access and all the other challenges that general practice is facing. But what on earth is cloud-based telephony? How is that different to what you're currently using in practice? And how is this actually going to help both your practice, your staff and your patients? Well, in this sponsored stream, we're joined by the team from Exxon Health. We're going to talk about exactly what it is, how it can help you, and basically how to tech enhance your primary care and learning. Shall we get cracking? Hello, EGP learners, and welcome to this live stream where we're talking about cloud-based telephony, specifically with our sponsored stream participants, Exxon Health. We've got the team here joining us today, and we're going to talk about various different aspects that I'm sure you're going to want to know about. Before we get cracking, though, I'm going to ask the team to introduce themselves. So if we can first of all go to Derek to let us know who he is and what he's doing. Hi there. Uh, my name is Derek Meacham. I look after the uh, product and development teams here at Exxon Health, so we're very much focused on... Uh, building the platform, making it better, and adding in all sorts of new features to hopefully help all our users. Cool. And then next we've got James. Hi, I'm the training team leader at Exxon. So I look after all of the onboarding. I also look after the build of various practices and help them make sure that they've got everything ready for their go lives. Awesome. Next, I can see Jang on screen. Hi, I'm Jang Bakker from Peel Hall Medical Practices in Manchester. And we're a new customer of Exxon Health. Cool. And finally, Paul. Hi, Paul Bensley. I'm the MD and founder of Exxon. And I started the whole thing off 20 plus years ago. And some of our avid EVG billers may remember Paul came and joined us, I think about a couple of years back, telling us about what Exxon was up to at that point and stuff. Um, and obviously, I know there's been massive changes and strides in terms of what's been going on. Indeed, there has massive growth as well. Yes. So tell us, um, Paul, what exactly is cloud-based telephony? So cloud-based telephony, um, Derek has us going to take us through the details of that. I'm just going to briefly tell you how we ended up in cloud-based telephony. Uh, so we started off providing, before there were clouds, 20 years ago, we provided off-premise equipment, which means um, we don't allow, we don't make sure that you put your phone system in the cupboard under the stairs. We do all the clever stuff up in the cloud. Um, and we were early to market in providing that sort of system across the board. We did that for 10 years. We developed what we thought was the best cloud and contact-based telephony system. And then about 14 years ago, we recognized that there was a specific need for this technology in healthcare and in particular in primary care where we saw big problems in dealing with phone calls from patients. And we decided to focus all our efforts on primary care. And uh, our first practice went in 14 years ago. They're still with us. And since then, we now have something like uh, two, over 2,000 practices using Surgery Connect, which has become our flagship product within primary care. We see that as being uh, part of the digital front door. We don't see we're in competition with the, the digital uh, initiatives within <clears throat> primary care. And uh, we are continually improving our own platform and IP. We've been on a journey of improving the system, make it specifically dedicated to the needs of primary care. And where we have many plans for the future in, in continuing that development. So uh, we're, as you'll see on the screen there, we're an EMIS elite partner. We integrate closely with TPP system one as well. And we're working with some advanced integration with Vision Healthcare as well. So we're, we're fully offering full integration and other partners within the digital healthcare environment. So it's very important to us to be part of the ecosystem. We're not just handling the uh, phone calls and we'll see more of this later on with some of the demos that are coming up. Um, and also, as we're receiving an awful lot of da data as well, so rich data is part of our our offering. Uh, Monday morning, we can process up to nearly five million calls in one day. So there's an awful lot of stuff going through our systems. Um, so I'm not going to 
talk too much because we've got a lot of more interesting things from um, particularly from <coughs> James and uh, Jane to show you this working in practice. But at the end, I'm, I'm going to briefly talk about what's called the Better Purchasing Framework, which is the government initiative that just been mentioned. So I'll hand back now to Derek and uh, take you to the next stage. Lovely. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, I was just going to start off uh, very quickly and cover off what is cloud-based telephony. Uh, it's a bit, of, a bit of a strange word. Some people would have heard of it, some people wouldn't. But essentially, it enables you to operate a phone system via an internet connection rather than the traditional physical telephone lines or the copper wires, as, as people called them. Um, I, I read recently, actually, they, the copper wires first got introduced in 1876. So it's a bit overdue, uh, some modernization. Um, and actually, some of you may have heard about the PSTN switch off, which is the public switch telephone network. And there are, there are plans to turn off this system in 2025 and try and move the entire country onto cloud-based telephony or VoIP systems. And essentially what that means for us is that the uh, voice traffic comes over the internet. Instead of coming directly to your telephone on premise, it comes into our data centers, which means we're fully in control of what's happening. We can integrate with other systems and we can add value to what's going on. And we can uh, then send the call on to any device in any location. And it enables us to handle, as Paul mentioned, you know, millions of phone calls a day. And it's on our platform and our system, so we can scale that to, to any size. And next up, a bit about our product. So our product is Surgery Connect. And yes, it is a cloud-based telephony system but also we very much think of it as a digital tool to be help manage the patient access. And it sits alongside other systems and forms part of your digital front door. Um, so yes, it does all the things that a normal phone system would do, uh, queuing, record, call recording, mobility, and uh, callbacks is a fairly standard feature that enables uh, the, the system to call back patients uh, instead of them queuing and waiting. Um, so really, we're on a mission to help get our help our users get the best out of the system. There's so many advanced features that we're going to hear uh, James and Jang talk about in a second, and we really want to get those features out there and get people using them. So we've been developing blueprints and best practice over the years of, of doing this. And we're soon to launch the Surgery Connect Academy, which is all about helping our users get the most out of the system. And as a cloud solution, it's fully flexible. and We can adapt to fit to the needs of uh, surgery or a PCN. And the integration works with uh, the likes of each communities for, for PCN working as well. Um, so what we're going to do now is James is going to take over and demo a couple of the features that we've got um to show you how this fits in and can help you over to you james thanks derek i'm actually going to show you our uh, phone bar which we've developed for system one which links up the um, clinical database then to your phone system so this is my desktop i've only got a couple of icons on here uh, one of which is the phone bar that's already started up down at the bottom here. So I'm just going to log into our demo version of System 1. So Surgery Connect is integrated with your clinical database so that logging into the clinical database will automatically log you in on Surgery Connect as well. System 1 taking its time as usual. I must admit, I like the little graphic you got when you logged in, um, James. I don't get that one on my system, so maybe you've got a newer version than that, even I do. Oh, maybe, yes. <laughs> oh, helps if you use the right password as well, doesn't it? I have to say, J James is being very brave and going for a live demo here. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> life without a little risk. Eh? <clears throat> you 
Okay, so there we go. So now I've got system one open and we've still got the phone bar sitting in front of the clinical database down at the bottom. And it's now logged me in on the phone bar as the user on that particular PC. So with Surgery Connect, all of the numbers, rather than going with individual old fashioned desk phones, go with the user. So it doesn't matter where you log into the system, it is um, uh, available to work totally remotely as well. I can move the phone bar. So if it's in the way on the left hand side, I can move it anywhere along my taskbar on my main screen here and clicking on the keypad will actually expand the phone bar so that I can then see all of the options that are available. I'm going to go through the options uh, one by one. The first one being your availability. So at the moment, this is telling me that I'm offline so I can log in in the morning and obviously not be available to take calls straight away. But if I click on the availability on the phone bar, it will then let me make myself available to make and receive calls. We've also added um, a few other call statuses. So you've got do not disturb for anybody that leaves the desk, obviously. So there's no calls coming through to that user when they're not there to answer them. And we also have a direct calls only status, which is great in reception. Um, they will be in groups to answer inbound calls from patients. And if they've been given something else to do for a couple of hours, they can go into direct calls only means they're still available for internal calls, but they're not going to be available uh, for calls coming through the queues. So they wouldn't be answering patient calls. They'd just be available internally there. Uh, you can also see the groups that the user is a member of. So my groups here are shown on the right hand side. If they're in bold, then I'm actually active in that queue to take those calls. So there is the facility as well to step in and out of the various groups. So if you've got people that help out with calls in the morning when it's busy and then don't take those calls for the rest of the day, they can quite simply deactivate the groups that the calls are coming through that they don't need to take. So it's a very flexible system and certainly from the users on the front end, everything's on their PC screen right in front of them and then there's no need to go anywhere else to find all of the information. Just over on the uh, left hand side of the phone bar here, we've got a little headset. That means that I'm using the soft phone. So all of my calls are going directly through my PC uh, or in this case through my laptop. Um, if I click on the device though, I've also got other devices that are available. So I'm um, using the soft phone. I've also got a mobile number so I can forward my calls onto a personal mobile or even a home landline number if I need to work remotely at any time and have my calls kept private there. And I've also got a favorited desk phone. So the room that I'm normally in has my desk phone there and I've marked that as a favorite so that it shows in my device manager. If you move around different rooms within the practice though, um, you will have a full list of all the phones in the drop down at the end so that you can select any phone for the room that you're currently working in. And that's where your calls will go. So if people prefer to use a desk phone rather than the on-screen soft phone, uh, they can do and the whole system is linked up so it doesn't matter whether you're pressing the buttons on the desk phone to change your status or whether you're doing it through the phone bar they will mirror each other there as well it's very simple to dial numbers on the phone bar um, no dialer to bring up on the screen just click in the box that says enter telephone number and then you can either type it in using your keyboard or you can copy and paste numbers in there uh, to call as well We've got a little contact book here, which will give you all of the internal numbers within the practice. Um, this is our training database. So we've got lots of uh, doctors set up within our practice here. And I can search that directory. So if I'm looking for someone uh, uh, in particular within the practice, then I can search here and it will bring back their details. Gives you a little click to call button. So there's no number to dial. You just click on the blue phone and it will call that user wherever they're logged in. So it doesn't matter then if, if that person is working remotely from home, they'd still be able to access the calls um, through Surgery Connect there. We've also put in a directory feature so that if there's any external numbers that practices use regularly, they can add those into the directory. That directory can be searched in exactly the same way. And in the central directory, if you hover over a phone, it will also tell you the number it's going to ring. So if you've got multiple numbers, uh, it will show you which different number you've got on the system there. There is a call history for each user as well. So that will keep a contact history of all the numbers that that user is connected with, uh, both inbound and outbound. And it will show the patient's contact number or the group or user's name if it was an internal call that you go through to. And again, click to call buttons here 
so that you can call those numbers directly from the calls list as well. We've tried to make it as easy as we possibly can for users to basically call those numbers from whichever screen they're in so that you don't have to keep going backwards and forwards between the different parts of the application. Over on the uh, right hand side of the phone bar, the other side, the um, availability, we've got some settings so you can actually um, customize how Surgery Connect works with your clinical database and in here uh, we have the options for things like quick file. So with Surgery Connect, you can save copies of call recordings or text messages, um, even photographs um, once that's been uh, enabled on the phone bar will be able to be saved directly back into the patient's clinical record. Once it's in the clinical database, that uh, data provider becomes the data controller. So obviously anybody that can access those details can also access the copy of the call recording, text message or photo if you've saved it to the patient's clinical record. But really handy to save those really vital conversations that you've had with patients, just so that you've got an actual record of the conversation in the clinical notes there as well. We've turned quick file off. Um, after every call, you can have uh, the pop-up box that says, do you want to file this call into the patient's clinical record? A lot of practices at the moment, whilst we get used to the patient accessing their own clinical records, aren't filing straight back into the patient's clinical record. So we have turned that off as a default. This fine patient record for incoming calls though is really useful, particularly in the reception area. So every inbound call, Surgery Connect will search the clinical database to see if there's any patients with that contact number. And if there are, it will bring up uh, the patient's details in a pop-up just above the phone bar. So that when the reception team are answering that call, it's already searched the clinical database and has the patients that match that number. And if there's more than one patient, you'll have a list on the screen of the various patients. When the receptionist answers the call, they can just click on the patient name and it will open that patient's record automatically in the clinical database for them. So it saves time in the morning searching and finding patients' records when those calls are coming in. So particularly first thing in the morning where we have a glut of calls coming into the practice, that automatic searching saves each receptionist seconds which add up as the day goes on there. We've also got an active patient option here. Um, so if I was to search for a patient within our system one demo, and then select that patient. When the patient record is open, and um, that patient is then active, if I just click on the active patient in the phone bar, it will bring up the communication methods available for that particular patient. Now this phone bar is at the moment still in development, so there are some areas that aren't available at the moment. We do have a phone bar available already for EMIS users, and they are using this active patient option as well. So within here, you can call, text, you can request a photograph from the patient, or you will be able to eventually, um, and also set up a video call. If you hover over the uh, icons, it will also show you the alternatives that are available on that patient's clinical record. So if Oliver here had um, a landline or a work number, it would also show those numbers so that you can just click on the number to actually call the patient directly from there. And then any clinicians can also access their appointment list directly through the phone bar. So just clicking on the appointment list will pull any appointment list that I have allocated to my user ID within the clinical database. So it's uh, searching for me within system one, although I can look at anybody else's list within here as well. I've got today's date and it will default to today, but you can look forward in your, uh, your appointment lists as well. And it will automatically refresh. So if you're adding new appointments to that list as the day goes on, they will automatically appear in this appointments list for you. Within the phone bar, you can select uh, different sites here. So if you are working on a multi-site, you can switch between the lists on different sites. You can also um, choose particular clinics um, so that we can specify whether it's a phone consultation or a face-to-face -face consultation there. You'll also see that information um, in the little information block on the appointment itself. So if I click on here, any additional notes that have been added onto that appointment will show there, including any temporary numbers that, that patient may be on for the day. 
We've got a little code that tells us this appointment is booked at the moment. And with anything with Surgery Connect, if you hover over it, it will tell you exactly what it means. So there's very little learning that you need to do. It's just a case of getting on and having a go. And the system will actually lead you through um, each process that you need to. We've got the time of the appointment as well as uh, the patient's name. You can just click on the patient name within the appointments here and it will swap the patient record uh, within the clinical database as well. And then if you want to bring their contact details for that patient, just click on contact and it will bring exactly the same contact options as you would then have available in the active patient. So I can then call, text, photo request or video call directly through the phone bar um, through the appointment list as well. So this is our front end view. In the background though, we also have various um, applications that are available to supervisor users. So with Surgery Connect, it does mean that the surgery uh, management team can actually change anything within the system without the need to come back to Exxon Health to make those changes for them. One of the applications that we have is XFlow. So I'm going to open up our training XFlow now. I'm just going to remove that phone bar from my screen so that we can see that a bit easier. So this is our XFlow system. It's a graphical representation of the call flow that Surgery Connect will use for all of the numbers within the practice. So whether it's an internal or an external number, you'll have a call flow and the supervisors on the system can change the messages and the routing that that call takes. And uh, this is particularly part of the system that Jang has made really good use of to help reduce the number of calls um, and queries that he has coming into the practice. Down the left hand side, we've got icons here and I can drag and drop any of these icons um, into our workspace and that will then create a new block that can then be customized. So I've got a start position here, which holds the telephone numbers that are applicable to this particular call flow. I've then got a welcome prompt. So Surgery Connect will answer the calls for you. And uh, usually we use text to speech. So if I go into the audio tab here, it's telling me what this is actually going to say. So it's very simple to change the messages to the patients at any time. You can do that at a moment's notice just by going in and changing the prompts there. And then as soon as you hit save, it goes on to a test number that we set up so that the practice can actually check that that sounds OK from the patient's point of view. And then they can deploy that call flow and it will swap the messages directly onto the main number for them. So there's no need to come to us. Um, anything uh, that's regular, you can pop onto a calendar and that will automatically change the messages. Um, but any changes you want to make to the prompts themselves can be done directly through XFlow. We can also specify um, how certain things are said. So, for example, numbers like 999, because we use text to speech, it can read it out as 999 sometimes. So we've even got the option to highlight the number and tell it to say it as a telephone number. So it always reads that number out as 999 and never says 999. So we can really customize exactly what you want it to say there. Once it's played this welcome prompt, this particular call flow then checks our main calendar. So the main calendar within the system would control the opening times, usually of the main telephone number. Um, so there'll be different modes that you can add to the calendar that will play different messages. If you need to evacuate the practice, um, then we can add an emergency message to the telephone line. That will then stop any calls coming into the practice whilst you're not there and able to answer them telling the patients that you closed due to unforeseen circumstances and offering 111 or 999 as alternative numbers to dial there. Once you're back in, you can remove the emergency message and then the phone lines are open as they would normally be at that time of day. So there are various different modes that we've got on the calendar, including things like holiday, which will play on your bank holidays. So there's nothing extra to do on any bank holidays. Uh, you don't need to remember to call us two weeks before to keep your phone lines closed. It will automatically pick that up from the calendar. And on the bank holiday, it will say that you're closed on all public bank holidays. And again, offer 111 or 999 as an alternative number to dial. On this particular call flow, if we're open, it then uh, tells our patients that all the calls are recorded for training and monitoring purposes, but you can customize the messages within these prompts to do exactly what you want. 
We then go through to a main menu, and this on our system is where we're offering our patients the choice to press one for appointments, two for prescriptions, three for general reception inquiries, or if they would like the uh, details of e-consult uh, so that they can access their details that way, then we're also able to send out text messages through our call flow. So we've got our e-consult website address details in a text message that we can then send out, and then patients can just click on that link and follow that through to the relevant area there. Once they've made their selection, they'll queue for a group of users that's uh, set up on the system to answer those particular calls. And you can have different groups answering different types of calls, or you could have the same people in all of those groups. And each time a call comes through one of the groups, then it will tell the user which group it's come through. So they should know whether they're dealing with an appointments call, a prescription queries call, or a test results call, depending on which groups you have set up within the practice and which groups users are members of then to actually answer the calls through. But you can even go as far as changing those voices, so the whispers that we play when they come through to the users, so you can actually customize those as well, so that you can announce different types of calls there. So that's a brief overview of our call flow. Uh, Jang, though, has made some amendments to his and has been using it very successfully. So I'm going to hang, hand over to him now so that he can show you what he's done and uh, or tell you what he's done and then explain what that's done within the practice. Hello. Um, we came across Surgery Connect after doing um, a bit of research regarding which of what to go for. Uh, prior to that, we were actually using a, a very old telephone system. We didn't know how many people were calling, how long were they waiting for. We had no metrics whatsoever. Um, and so it's essential, as all surgeries uh, actually know, is for the patient's journey, your patient survey, which highlights various questions around, um, is it easy to get, get through on the phone for your patients and one, and also your um, inspection with Surgery Connect uh, with uh, actual CQC. We want to know what you've done to enhance your patient's journey through the system, which is going to be more apparent towards the end of this year. So as yeah, the graph that you can see that originally, we actually had over 14,500 calls in April 2021. That's the number of calls that were actually coming in, which was massive. Busy from 8 o'clock in the morning till 12 o'clock. Every morning, looking at the reports, we could tell the busy periods, we could tell how many staff we actually had to throw on the phones to actually manage that requirement, that need from patients that were, uh, it, uh, which in all fairness can be very demanding. Um, and then where we are now in May 2023, we've actually got the calls down to roughly just over 6,000 calls. And that was actually using Surgery Connect effectively. Now, um, when you, when you get the actual service from Surgery Connect, you have to get the metrics and look at where, where the pinching points for your surgery. Is it in the morning? Is it in the afternoon as well? What we also found was that the actual queue time um, was roughly about 900 seconds in, 2000, in uh, April 2021 to where it is now, which is just over three minutes in um, May 2023. That is actually working with having your core flow. So when a call comes into your surgery, what's that call about? What you can do with that call? Is it the right time for that call to come in? So, for example, with ourselves, we only actually have prescription queries um, in after half 10. So if a call came regarding that, it will get funneled away going, please call back later. So you're managing that call um, where it's going to be going. And also what we've recently actually added in there is patients just called in the morning and they have the option to have the online consultation link text sent to them via text which is actually trained roughly about at the moment between 60 and 70 calls per day which is a really good saving in terms of staff time and also the experience for the patient's journey as well um what we also we use is hunt groups so if an admin member of staff wants to speak to a doctor all they simply do is click the hunt group for a doctor it'll find the first available doctor answer query and vice versa as well for the doctor to the running all the time showing how many calls we've got coming in how many calls being answered who's busy who's active which is essential information because you know where you're up where you're up to with at that particular point of the day as well it's very very essential that you look at this kind of information that you know what your trends and your patterns are so you can manage your staff 
effectively um, and also the patients effectively as well in terms of article of prescriptions, what they're actually after um, and also getting sort of the feel as well of the queries from the from the patients as well. We're quite fortunate to have a very good practice manager who will actually go onto the phones on a daily basis just to feel the temperature of what's come through the patients as well. And uh, what's been quite essential is the call recording. Uh, historically, patients were, shall we say, very demanding. And uh, if I can say that as well, it's at times abusive as well, but with call recording, that's nullified that virtually overnight. Calls have been recorded. Um, having a word with the patient, by the way, your, your um, behavior is not acceptable. Now, we don't have any conversation about those kind of calls anymore. Now, it cuts both ways as well for staff. Uh, highlighting any training issues for staff. Not to be with a stick, but go, oh, by the way, you know, in that call, did you know you could do X, Y, and Z instead of what you actually said? So they actually have a, you know, a training element used within actually Surgery Connect, so which can be highlighted by, by actually using this service. So with the X-Flow, once again, it look, might look quite daunting, but trust me, X1 Health are very helpful when it comes to comes to this, especially James. I've spent many hours talking about X flow, talking about this, what to change, how to trim it. And so what what you need to do is actually get really invested in this, and what it's going to do is going to save you your patients' time, your staff time, have an audit trail for patients that have called in, so you can actually have. We were it's a situation whereby patients got I called in, or did you? What, what was your number? This is my number. Mm. We've gone through there. You haven't called. You didn't unfortunately call in from that number, or maybe another number. Then eventually, it's happened a few times, and it nullifies that as well. So, like I said, it can look quite daunting. All the features and all the particular elements of um, Exxon Health, but I can reassure you that Exxon Health will actually hold your hand through the process, like myself. New service to us. New service to all the doctors who are going. We don't want this newfangled thing. We're all right with the telephone lines that we've got. No. The lead GP going, Jang, have you lost your mind? You're now paying five times as much as you've done. Oh, but however, I can highlight that what, what we're saving is double, three times the amount in terms of what we're actually spending in terms of staff saving time, knowing who they spoke to, finding out the call recording, um, being able to transfer that call recording to the doctor as well. Going, by the way, and this patient, this is what they said. So as opposed to, you know, actually playing Chinese whispers or, um, writing things down and missing certain elements and points as well, which is very essential. So for us, and uh, it's been game changing. As you can see from the stats I've shown you, that's just a few of them. What we also can highlight is that it's member of staff that uh, spends quite a lot, lot of times on phone calls with patients or too short as well. And we can monitor that accordingly as well. And the main thing is that we can now next GP patient service clearly and categorically say is like our waiting time is lower uh, historically it's going down more and more and as with CQC as well with an inspection which we've had recently as well we've highlighted what we're doing to help the patient journey uh, which is several got through the inspection got rating of good which is great but all this is work that's been done by the practice manager Ali Mulligan deputy Sonia Sanders myself and the lead GP, uh, Dr. Ash Baka, working together, having the same vision and goal, which is to enhance an offering for the patient where they have an ease of use of the service, easily accessible, number one. Number two is also free up time for staff, doctors, admin, to focus and concentrate on other things that we're, what we can do. So in that way, it's been invaluable. So. If you haven't got it already, I suggest you go out and get a trial from um, Exxon Health. It's free, by the way. Um, don't get commissioned. No, I'm joking. Um, yeah, and so basically, a trial that is going to be, um, it was painless for us. Even against it installed within a managed building, um, the installation was was painless. Well, I thought it would be quite demanding, but no, it was quite seamless transition as well. So that's all I've got to say. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you, James. Um, and I know that we've had a few questions come through separate to the chat, but I think if people do want to add in their own questions and stuff that are watching us live, feel free to do that in the chat right now. 
just before we go to those, I know that um, Paul was going to tell us a little bit more about this whole new thing that's happened to general practice, which is this better purchasing framework. Can you fill us in on that, Paul, in terms of what that is and how does that affect some of the stuff that you're doing in particular as well? Yes, what is it? So um, most of what I'm going to say is in the public domain. There are certain things that we're probably not um, not able to talk about quite yet. Uh, Derek, if you could stick that slide up, if you have the ability to do so. Um, so the better purchasing framework is uh, an NHS initiative. Effectively, it's an advanced framework pending a full framework for cloud telephony, which is due was originally due to be launched in the middle of this year. I've, I, I believe it has been delayed now. And then alongside that, uh, funding has been announced by the government because as Derek mentioned at the beginning, uh, everybody is now required to get off old analog systems by the end of 25. Um, and it's brilliant to hear that story from Jang. Uh, it's also of great benefit to practices um, in handling patient access to switch everybody onto a cloud-based system uh, to get over some of the issues that were there before. So as part of the drawing up the specification for the final framework, uh, a set of capabilities, which means the features basically, and the standards, which means um, compliance in terms of IG and um, a whole range of standards under the general DTAC banner and patient safety have been developed um, and those have been developed over a period of a, a year a year and a half and some piloting has taken place to draw up those standards and capabilities um, and that has led to what's called the better purchasing framework which was launched at the beginning of the year there's a link to it there so it's it's publicly available and there are currently five suppliers mentioned there and of course we can't speak we can only speak for ourselves and uh, i'm sure they're all as good um, and as part of this, as mentioned, funding is an available, has announced nationally, uh, figure mentioned has been 240 million pounds and again in the public domain, how that will be allocated and the exact mechanisms are still under discussion. Um, but the, the uh, NHS procurement team must be involved, uh, in order to secure funding for, um, this switch to cloud telephony. So little more that i can say on that at the moment um more will be i'm sure announced in due course uh, as this gets sorted out um but uh, i think that's worth knowing about if you still have an old analog system and certainly this is something that uh, <clears throat> icbs will take a role a leading role in um, the allocation of the funding we believe okay so that's that's about it from me um so i think we move on to questions now we do and we've had a fair few come in before the, the stream as well and absolutely happy to take any questions you got from the live viewers as well um i guess just to pick up on that point that you mentioned so the funding's been given to the icbs to support practices with the changeover and particularly the initiation of um starting at cloud-based telephony and stuff so is that something that the practices have to kind of approach the icb about or is that something that the icb should be going to the practices do you have any ideas on, on that side of things it's not laid down in stone as we understand though practices in the first instance i think should approach their icbs who will then approach the procurement team it's our mm -hmm. understanding of the route to go forward uh, there is certainly some indication that there's a preference that um, it, it is easier certainly at PCN level and maybe at ICB level that uh, there is a choice of a particular supplier across a PCN since when we one of your questions was working at PCN scale mm -hmm. it is a lot simpler from the point of view of um, tying up working practices that PCNs choose the same supplier so that they can configure systems uh, in the same way and get the benefits across the PCN uh, and also exchange traffic between practices within the PCN or within hubs. Uh, so for all that reason, <clears throat> there will be decisions made as to which supplier should be used across a group, um, whether that's PCN or ICB wide, uh, as uh, in order to set some degree of standardization. Mm -hmm. 
So I guess to pick up on that question that we had, so I mean, this was one that was submitted by one of the EGP learners. So they have access to um, Exxon, you know, the Surgery Connect platform, but they work sometimes for the practice and then they also do some enhanced access hours for the network. How does that change the way they access it? Is there something different they need to do? Because I think they were just starting to go through the process and stuff and keen to look at using it in that way. Is there a different kind of Pro, you know, login approach, or is it just literally jump in, dial in, and get cracking? Uh, it's. I think this is a, a situation where they they really need to talk to us, um, and we can work out what the best solution for them is at their particular practice with their particular setups. It's something where we're doing a lot of work at the moment, and we have some um, blueprint PCN set up where we're looking at how staff can move between practices within the PCN with greatest efficiency. It also comes down to future plans for a single sign-on across uh, for all staff across all platforms, mm -hmm. um, which of course is a, a big job and is going to take a little time before those standards are even announced to us so that we can adhere to them. Once we get to that point, then I think staff have total mobility between different practices within the PCN. We're not there yet, but in the meantime, we can find solutions to most most ways of uh, remote and inter-site working. Awesome, cool. Um, I know we had other questions come through about um, the uh, various aspects in terms of the equipment that people need when they're starting using um, Surgery Connect and stuff. So obviously you need the PCs and, and, then, and that kind of stuff. Is there, I guess, a requirement in terms of bandwidth for the internet? Is there specific suggestions you give in terms of hardware that people use like headsets and that kind of stuff? So there's, there are two ways that we, we implement Surgery Connect. And the lowest common denominator is we supply absolutely everything you need we'll give you the handsets, we'll supply the connectivity, and so you don't need to worry about a bandwidth or any of those items. We'll make sure that we provide sufficient quality of service and to deliver what we're delivering. Um, when we get into running soft phones on uh, the practice network or across the HSCN, that becomes a little more complicated, and there is a big um, discrepancy between different ICBs as to and different IT um, support organizations within those ICBs as to what is allowed, what we do. And that those are ongoing discussions that we're having um, with the national team as to how we best support telephony across the HSCN network. But in the meantime, our standard way of delivery is that we take care of all hardware, all connectivity. So it isn't a blocker to implementing cloud telephony in any way at all, uh, because that's our responsibility is to provide an end-to-end -end service. Okay, cool. Um, watching the demonstration, I guess one thing that came into my mind whilst watching it was um, you mentioned about the option of being able to record um, the audio kind of aspects of the, the call into the patient notes and stuff. I guess for, we know that from November nationally, patient access to records is going to be available and stuff. So would that mean that the patient would also have access to that audio recording from that date onwards if their practice or already, if their practice already signed up to prospective access and stuff? Well, I, I think James's point was that as we put the um, that data into the patient record, the uh, the practice becomes the data controller, mm -hmm. and that question really, therefore, that responsibility as to whether those recordings are made available to the patient uh, becomes the responsibility of the practice. Uh, I I don't immediately know what can be restricted and what can be allowed from a patient mm -hmm. access perspective. Have we experienced that um, in practice? Perhaps there are James some has... practices that set their notes as private so the patients can't see them. So obviously if that was done with a call recording, then that would be the same. They wouldn't be able to access it. But if it's just general access and it's available for them to see within the notes, then yes, they'd be able to access it. Right, so it's a choice. Yeah, and actually there's there's been some recent good news on that. So uh, we, we store things uh, via the APIs to the clinical systems. And they've they've started upgrading some of those APIs to make that a setting, whether it's patient visible or not. So that will, mm -hmm. that will come further down the line. Here we are. Okay. Ask an expert. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was just interesting because obviously um, playing an audio through, for example, the NHS app, which many people may potentially use to view their record, 
I wasn't sure how that would work, whether it would work. I don't know. Hence why I just took the opportunity to ask the question. But I appreciate it. It's a really weird question as well with that one because it's a it's the new world that we're looking at with record access and stuff as well isn't it so yeah um i guess the other question i had um you obviously use equipment to help with the um access to the systems and stuff um i know that when i for example i have various different programs running for example if i'm screen sharing with the teams and that all that kind of stuff sometimes um, the hardware doesn't work quite rightly because it's being used by one system so for example i'm thinking about if my headset's being used with surgery connect does that mean that another program can still use the headset whilst i'm doing that would would that work i'm thinking particularly i think dictation tools and stuff which practices may be using i guess is one of the key uses i'd see is that going to work? Is that not going to work? They're going to have to have multiple microphones. Weird question again. Try James on that one. I think I haven't come across it myself. <laughs> um, yeah, so obviously we use Surgery Connect as our system as well within the office. And mm -hmm. all of my audio goes through my USB headset that I've got plugged into my laptop. So it doesn't matter whether I'm doing a meeting or whether I've got um, a video playing in the background all of that audio goes through, including the call audio, so the ringing tones and everything. So it's one headset. If you're using the soft phone, you just need one headset, and then you can use it for everything on that particular PC. Always worth trying with specific pro uh, programs before you go live, though, just to make sure. OK. Cool. Try first. Um, one of the questions I always get asked to ask for anything that I show on here. So there's two questions actually I always get asked to ask. So number one is about the pricing and the second one is about the onboarding experience and time frames that you have. So if somebody did want to start looking at the product, how long will it take from when they contact you to potentially till they able to start using the product and stuff? So would you be able to answer those two questions? They're quite big questions and they are also questions that come into current discussions so anything i say may change um but um our pricing model up to recently has been an all-inclusive cost per license um which includes everything we've talked about in terms of training onboarding handsets um support indefinite support all call costs and uh, that has been inclusive um there are different pricing models under this under discussion and keep in touch is is the best I can offer on that. Um, there was another sorry, there was some other part of your question that uh, uh, the onboarding time. So the time oh, the onboarding. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Yeah. So there's <clears throat> if you um, if you're in a practice that might be we have quite a broad range of onboarding times because you, if you're in a listed building that requires cabling um, and a handset set up from scratch, that is going to be a much longer onboarding time than if you're willing to go live on soft phones, in which case you can uh, move extremely quickly. So um, our standard, which is cabling handsets onboarding time is, is typically around nine to 10 weeks, uh, but we have done some extremely quick onboarding for practices who have, for example, they have a, a contract coming up with an existing legacy supplier and they want to move very quickly by installing cell phones, we can get practices up and running. I'm not going to quote a figure because somebody will say, you said three days and uh, it's not mm -hmm. our service delivery team will have a heart attack, but um, <laughs> certainly much more quickly than that. Fair enough. So fairly rapid with the soft phones because it's uh, obviously based down to existing infrastructure. And um, yep. if you're going for the whole hog, you're looking at potentially about two to three months, depending on the situation within the practice and obviously the infrastructure that's already in place and may need changing. Is that probably a good yes. summary? That's a very good summary. Better put than I did. <laughs> okay, no problem. Um, and I guess in terms of other questions, um, so I've had another one coming through one of our, my social media channels. Um, uh, James, you were showing us the XFlow stuff um, and things, and the text to speech in particular looks really cool in the way that you can adjust that. Because I can appreciate having to record new audio it gets really, really frustrating. Um, does it work in multiple languages? At the moment, no. Okay. However, we do have options available. So we have surgeries in Wales that uh, we we can record Welsh. So as well as the text to speech, you can also upload your own audio files. So if it's an alternative language, then we can get the prompts recorded 
uh, usually by somebody within the practice that speaks that language. And then we can upload them into an alternative call flow that they can then select. So we can put a menu at the beginning and say, would you like this in English or would you prefer it in Welsh or whatever other language you have to offer? Okay. But I think oh, Derek will have registered that question and it's probably gone, crept into the bottom of the roadmap already. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think there's plenty of future things we can do there with uh, transcription and, and translation. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, watch watch this space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I guess we're now living in the world of AI, where AI apparently can fix everything and stuff. But I appreciate that obviously multi language is still a complex challenge that we all face when it comes to access and stuff, and and whether that's something that is on the roadmap. But it sounds like it is, um, and keen to see how it develops and stuff. Um, so uh, we're coming towards time. I've got one more weird question. I like these weird questions and hopefully it'll make everyone laugh a little bit. So um, often I see many platforms have obviously the, the toolbar aspect. Where's the best place to leave the toolbar when you're actually <laughs> using it on screen? That's my favorite question. <laughs> we have lots of arguments about that. Um, perhaps somebody who's using a toolbar should answer that. My view is it ought to be flexible so that everybody has the choice of putting the toolbar where they would like it to stay. Very diplomatic answer there, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I think to mention is that we are also in uh, having discussions about introducing other people's um, access into our toolbar, and I'm sure everybody will say they'd like to uh, their bit, they'd put our bits in their toolbar as well, but it, it doesn't mm -hmm. make sense to have multiple toolbars for consultation and uh, sending an SMS and all the other things. So to have a, a single master toolbar that has links to all the other consultation software and the other bits and pieces makes more sense to me. You don't want those of these things. Absolutely. Less um, multiple places you have to look for stuff will always make a clinician's more. life or an administrator's life so much easier and stuff. So definitely support you with that one in terms of a unified toolbar. And, you know, it's, it's like the dream of single sign on as well. That's the one that many of us are anxiously keen to see because I think that'll have huge benefits in terms of the cognitive load that many of us face and stuff. Um, thank you to everybody for joining us. I guess if people were interested in looking at um, the Exxon Health Surgery Connect platform and stuff, where would you recommend is the best place for them to go to look into this in more detail and to contact yourselves and stuff? Contacting ourselves for a full demo is the ideal, but there are many resources online, um, which uh, will, some of them featuring the lovely James, um, which will take you through all the detail of the product, in, in, you know, the great deal of more than we can fit into this this call so uh, i think have a look at that and then have a chat with one of our consultants if you'd like to take it further absolutely if people to want to access so go for it paul sorry i was just saying type surgery connect into google and you will find us and if not if people are watching this live or even on the replay and stuff do check out down below in the show notes there'll be the link to the website as well so you can just click on that and go straight to it as well if you are doing that whilst you're clicking do click on the notify button to be informed about more about the other kind of streams that we'll be covering and potentially other tools that can help you in practice and stuff thank you to the team from exxon health to coming to talk to us about this i know this is one of the streams i've been asked to loads to talk about in terms of what on earth is cloud-based telephony and how can it help us and i think definitely there's some cool things in there i love the xflow stuff i'm i'm aware that i mean i may end up getting too deep into that and stuff because there's so many things you can play with there i think that would make life so much easier for many people and absolutely some of those usability aspects in terms of the way that you're using the toolbar and the the connecting us that you know that kind of group switching thing that was quite cool you know the fact that you could just jump out and jump in and into another group and help out and stuff like that. i think that's a feature i must admit i've not seen before or heard about so definitely keen to look at that as well and um, so again thank you to the team for joining us if people do want to catch up and rewind and have a look back at these sections do feel free to do so and as always egp learning is here to help tech enhance your primary care and learning and we'll catch you in the next episode which is probably coming up somewhere about